Okay, flammable and combustible liquids. View of the o overview of the OSHA standard applies to handling, storage, and use of flammable and combustible liquids with a flash point below 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, below if it's above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it's not covered in this standard. Two primary hazards associated with flammable and combustible liquids, explosion and fire. Okay, and this talks about uh, design and construction, ventilation, ignition sources, and storage to prevent these hazards from occurring. Objectives. There's four of them. There's eight objectives. Oh, I didn't pass out the handout. Did I? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Find flash point, flammable liquid, and combustible liquid. All these, I think I answered most of these on your handout. Two ways to avoid explosion or fire from flammable or combustible liquids. Four potential ignition sources, minimum components for a flammable and combustible liquid program. Two actions that apply to each of these components. Ventilation requirements. Four methods to transfer liquids that are approved by OSHA. And talk about bonding and grounding as it pertains to these things. Intro. The two primary hazards associated with flammable and combustible liquids are explosion and fire. Fire, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Safe really? handling and storage of flammable liquids requires the use and approved equipment and practices for OSHA standards. Okay? Um, I forgot to put, I think I put it on the handout what the OSHA standard was. Uh, Subpart. I forgot to put it on the handout of the slide. Okay, a couple definitions. Flashpoint. You guys can read it. How many know these definitions prior to sitting through this? Flashpoint, flammable liquids, and combustible liquids. Okay. Flashpoint, the minimum temperature at which a liquid gives off enough vapor to form an ignitable mixture. This is very important. The lower the flashpoint, the greater the hazard. Okay, can anybody explain that? Gas fumes in the air. Meaning it'll take less oh. less heat for it to, or a, yeah, it's a it's a it's it's a lower temperature that it will combust. Yeah, gasoline's like real low, negative forty or something like that. It'll still give off flammable yeah. vapors. So yeah, flash point. The lower the flash point, <laughs> the greater the hazard. A flammable liquid has a flash point below one hundred degrees. Okay. The re this is really very important here. More dangerous than combustible liquids since they may be ignited at room temperature. Okay? Combustible liquids <coughs> have flash point at or above 100 degrees <coughs> Fahrenheit. Okay? So it says uh, higher flash points and flammable liquids, they still pose serious fire and or explosion hazard when heated. I mean, we have every, every, area has something that gets above 100 degrees, right? I mean, seriously. There's always something going on. You know, you might have a little motor that's got a little bit of, you know, shifting inside, a little bit of sparking going on. That's where a lot of the problems occur is with fans. When the ventilation, they're not, the, the, the uh, rotor is not enclosed. A ventilation fan, you have a little bit of sparking going on in brushes and all this flammable uh, vapors that have built up for combustible vapors that have built up all it takes is that little spark from the fan a little bit of uh, arcing on those brushes and that's all it takes to ignite these vapors so combustible is still a little uh, it's even though it's a higher flash point still very dangerous this is a little chart that shows you kind of uh, um, different uh, cases of um, or classes of uh, combustible and flammable liquids. 1A, 1B, 1C, well, there's a description I'll tell you a little bit about it. Class 2 and 3A, notice they're all below 200. Okay, all these have a uh, fl uh, uh, flash point less than 200. Remember, the lower is the lower the flash point, the more dangerous it is, right? The greater the hazard. So 1A is 73 and below. Uh, 1A and 1B, 1C is 73 to 100, 2 and then 3 are different, you can read them up there, okay? Uh, they have a brief description of them right here, and, and the next one. Okay, class 1A, ether, 
Flash point negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. 1B is gasoline, negative 45, and then a couple other ones. Whoops. 1C, turpentine. You guys have all used turpentine. 95 degrees, so uh, those are some examples of 1A, 1B, and 1C. <coughs> okay. If you've got if you've got flammable liquids, you need to have a flammable and combustible liquid program. Okay? Um, you have to have, in order to have a flammable program, or flammable or combustible, I can't say this very fast. I'm just not smart enough. <laughs> flammable and combustible liquid program, you got to have at least these components of the program. You have to talk about control of ignition sources. Okay? You need to talk about proper storage fire control and safe handling of all of all these liquids. So if you have if you have an area that has these liquids, you need to have some kind of program. Your program needs to include these things on there, okay, as a minimum. Okay. Each one we talked about here a little bit more. Sources of ignition must take adequate precautions to prevent ignition of flammable vapors. Some of the ignition sources include, this is not an all inclusive. It should include the ones that are prevalent in your area. So if your shop has welding, we talk about welding in there somewhere, cutting and welding. Okay? If it has hot plates, it, or you guys get the picture. Okay? So those are some examples. Open flames, smoking, static electricity, cutting and welding, hot surfaces, electrical and mechanical sparks, and lighting. Okay? So all those are sources of ignition. Remember lighting. Uh, Gasoline burns the vapors, the flash point is what, negative 49? And those lights that you screw in, what kind of lights are those? Incandescent? Something like that? Not, CFLs are pretty cool, but those other ones get hot. Incandescent. They get smoking hot. I mean, you touch them and leave, leave hide on the light bulb. So those right there, just by plugging in a 100-watt light bulb, can get hot enough to exceed the flash point on different uh, flammable liquids. All those things you need to think about. Static electricity. That's a specific one it talked about, but that's one that is uh, has got some special precautions associated with it. Static electricity. How do you create static electricity? Friction. Friction. You skip your feet on the carpet. You guys ever done that? I told you about when we did that. We used to draw like lightning bolts about a half inch long. Turn the lights off, it gets dark, and you can see it, and it's pretty blue. Something to do when you're drinking or something like that. <laughs> Generate when a fluid flows through a pipe or from an opening into a tank. Okay? So friction, right, movement. Something that has movement can generate static electricity if it's got the right component. Okay, main hazards are fire and explosion from sparks containing enough energy to ignite flammable vapors. Has anybody seen any videos on TV where, I know you guys, if you watch any, I don't watch TV and I've seen a couple of them, where a guy's, you know, filling his gas can in the bed of his truck, a little bit of static and the thing goes up in flames and he catches on fire and, you know, they put him out with windshield washer fluid and stuff like that. You guys have all seen that, right? Okay, static electricity flowing from the nozzle into the can, flowing stuff. There's no, if, if a spark's created, there's no place for the spark to go, and it, the vapors catch on fire, okay? You guys have all read the precautions, or you have heard people tell you that when you're filling a gas can, take it out of the bed of the truck and set it on the ground, right? You ground that can, okay, so that if <coughs> there is any kind of difference in potential, then you're, you're grounded, you're not creating a spark. Uh, when you get a difference in potential and you get something that will conduct, It'll conduct south. Is that why they're plastic now, more or less? Yeah. I think they're plastic. The gas cans are plastic now because they're cheaper and lighter. I think plastic gas cans will still. I mean, you actually can probably build up more of a charge there. Plastic squares, PVC. Ever take a balloon and rub it on your hair and stick it on the wall? There's nothing conducted there. But that's static. Yeah, that's. Open the balloon up, so 
<laughs> anywhere you can build up a charge, if that charge discharges and creates a spark and you have a flammable vapor there, it's going to ignite. So if you keep your can on the ground when you're filling your gas can, then that'll keep it grounded. Bonding or grounding of flammable liquid containers is necessary to prevent static electricity from causing a spark. What's bonding? We talked about it in electrical safety. Conductive yeah, it's 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 connecting two conductive things together. Okay. Uh, you might have one switch gear and another switch gear. The electrical connection between those is is uh, bonding connection. Okay, and then what's grounding? those conductive materials to ground, okay? So if you have a flammable material or a flammable liquid program and you actually deal with this stuff a lot, you'll have uh, all your apparatuses will be bonded and grounded. Okay, there's a couple pictures in there I think it shows. 